Hi, good morning, everybody. How's everyone doing this morning? Great. Great. So my name is Mark. A lot of you know me, but for those who don't, um, I'm a peer counselor. And that just means that I'm somebody who has my own mental health diagnosis, which is uh, anxiety disorder and depression. And I am certified by the state of New York to help other people who are in similar positions. So I've been um, working with the Flowers of Hope organization for several years now, I think pretty close to the beginning. Um, and I'm thankful to be out here to be able to do these talks with everybody here. So I was thinking about the topic that I was going to do for this particular speech. And I spoke to Gina and something that is relevant to me right now and I know is relevant to lots of people is dealing with grief. So recently I've lost my father like two months ago after a very long battle that he had with Alzheimer's and dementia. And the process of getting through that has been difficult, but there has also been different things that I have learned through research and through therapy that I wanted to share because I know that lots of people, everyone experiences loss at some point. So these are some things that I have learned about the grieving process. I know a lot of people know of these stages of grief. They put stages of grief together to help people understand about the grieving process. And there's five stages. The first stage involves denial. And in the denial stage, sometimes you feel numb, you avoid thinking about your loss, you feel like it isn't real. Sometimes you see and visualize the person or thing that you have lost. It becomes very vivid for you. In my case, you know, I had, I've had a lot of different dreams where it feels like my dad's still here even though I know he's not. Um, sometimes you can feel limited emotions. Your mind goes into this phase where it protects itself from experiencing the extreme emotions of loss. So sometimes a person can shut down and kind of start going on autopilot where they're just going through the motions and they're not really feeling too much of anything. There's the anger phase, which is the second phase where you might feel anger towards the person that you have lost or you might feel angry at yourself feeling like I could have done more or I could have done things differently. There's the bargaining stage where you start asking a lot of what if questions and you start feeling regretful about how things were going when that person was still here. Uh, there's the depression phase. The depression phase is when the loss really starts to settle in for you. And then you really start to realize uh, the finality of it. And it can make you have symptoms that mimic having clinical depression, but it doesn't necessarily have to be clinical depression. And what I mean by that is clinical depression is something that some people face all the time. Um, Whereas this is more of a situational depression because you're dealing with something specific. And the final stage is acceptance. So what I have understood acceptance to me is not necessarily that you have accepted the loss. It's just that you now understand it a little bit better and you're now at a point where you're finding a new normal starting with this new normal instead of wishing for things to be exactly how they used to be you understand that they're not going to be that way so now you're finding new ways to enjoy your life new ways to be happy and you're finding new purpose so on the other side of this I have some different things that help 
with coping with loss and coping with those feelings. The first thing that I have here is allow emotional flexibility. One thing that you will find is that a lot of people will tell you exactly how your loss is supposed to feel. Because lots of people, everyone experiences that in some capacity. But we all experience it differently. So there's not one way, there's not one time frame, and there's not one way to feel. Like somebody might feel angry right away, or somebody might feel very sad right away. Like these stages, we don't go through them one, two, three, four, five. It's different for everybody. So when I say allow emotional flexibility, it means allow yourself to feel whatever you're gonna feel. Don't feel guilty about that. Don't feel bad about that. Um, emotions come and go and you can't control that. Give yourself time. Grieving is a process. It's not a thing that just starts at one time and ends at another time. And in some ways I think that it goes on throughout our whole life. It doesn't completely go away. It's just that the feelings that we get when we think about those past times of people they were able to lessen the feelings of sadness that come with that. Seek out grief counseling. Uh, don't be afraid to seek out help from somebody who is a professional with this. And they're there specifically <laughs> for that. We have all of these resources. Um, and sometimes just talking to family and friends, they might want to help but they don't always have the capacity to listen to all of that, all of your problems or what you're going through all the time. So the professionals pay to do that, they're trained to do that, and uh, seeking them out can be important. Understand that grief comes in stages. Like the way that I've lifted out the stages, listed out the stages here, it can feel differently at different times. And they don't always go in order, so like I was saying earlier. So leaning on family and friends. Leaning on family and friends is an important one. If you have good family and friends that you trust that care about you, make sure that if they say, hey, if you ever need anything, if you need someone to talk to, utilize that support. It's important because if you keep it inside, it can start to consume you. And it can be hard to get out of that place when you're not talking with different people about what you're feeling. Uh, learn to set boundaries. And what I mean by that one, this is something that I experienced. My life is a very active life where I do a lot of things with my job, outside of my job. So when my dad passed, I was trying to keep going with the life that I was going with. Um, before and I found that everything started to pile up on me and I started to get overwhelmed because when people would say can you do this or can you help me with this or um, can you meet me here I'm like yes I'll do that yes I'll do that but then I was finding it was so hard for me to do that because I was still trying to process the loss so when I say learn to set boundaries take your time if you're feeling the pain of a loss to actually be able to spend some time with yourself and clear your mind a little bit before you just jump in and try to keep doing your previous activities. Uh, seeking out spiritual support. Um, that could be an important one too with whichever religion that you might follow. Uh, for me, you know, prayer, and seeking out support from the church has been uh, very instrumental for me. Take care of yourself. Sometimes self-care is not something that you're really thinking about until you're not doing it. And that involves your regular daily routine, getting enough sleep, eating properly, doing your exercise, like how everyone is doing the Zumba here. It's good to make sure that you're doing those things because when you're not, that can contribute to further depression. At a certain point, you 
find ways to celebrate the legacy of that person. Um, finding new senses of purpose and figuring out ways to honor the person that you lost. Now, keeping a healthy routine is something that I have found to be really important as well. Because if you're not specifically making sure that you're taking care of your health, your health is everything, your physical health and your mental health. Because I know people just think of the physical health part of it, but without your mental health, you don't have anything. And the last thing that I have on the list here is finding a new normal. I'm getting to that part. I know it's gonna take some time, but finding a new normal. I read something the other day that says, when you deal with certain losses, your life changes forever, but it doesn't have to be a bad thing. You can take the good parts of what you got from that person. Like, they were here for my journey up to this point, and I'm gonna take the things that they gave to me and give those things back to the world and find a new sense of purpose. It doesn't always have to be something where you just feel sad and paralyzed and down. And it's a learning experience that all of us experience at some point in life. And it's also how we learn to connect with each other. Because during times like that, you realize sometimes you think that you can go through everything alone. You feel like, hey, there's resources out there. There's things for me to read. There's books. I can watch YouTube. I can listen to podcasts. It'll help fill me up. <laughs> But really, at the end of the day, we're just people. We're all here and we all need each other. So for me, getting calls and having people visit and having people talk to me has been everything. And it, it really shows you that you're here to support one another. Well, I want to thank you, Gina, for inviting me here and thank the group for everything that you've shared. I know it wasn't easy to share those things, it wasn't easy for me either, but um, I really enjoyed being able to speak to everybody, and I hope to see you again soon. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah.